So who else is relatively paranoid about losing access to, you know, their accounts? Like in general, I feel like I'm actually pretty good with my accounts because every single account I have has a unique password. But you know, kind of what happens if my method of making passwords fails? You have a method for making passwords? Yeah, I'm tech awesome like that, but I'm still human. That means I still kind of fail at some of the internet security stuff. So Val, what's your favorite password? No. <laughs> In the next few minutes, we're going to cover the basics for 2FA or MFA, talk about how we chose the keys for the review, and then review the selected keys. And after all that, I'm going to share with you guys how I create my passwords just to pass it off to you guys so that no shady actors can access your guys' accounts. And I feel stuff like that is just valuable information to share because not everybody really wants to spend hundreds of dollars on these keys, but everybody should have a method of creating good passwords. Right, Val? Yes. <laughs> so 2FA and MFA stand for two-factor authentication and multi-factor authentication, respectively. And a service that uses 2FA will basically ask you to provide two different passwords instead of the usual one. The first password is usually the same password you use for both your bank account and your cat meme website. The second password is a one-time password and an OTP that's generated by a machine or server and is different every single time. Now, there are a few ways to implement 2FA. There's an on-demand token, a soft token, a hard token, and then an updated hard token. So we'll cover all those well, in the next few minutes. Now, the method of 2FA that we're all very familiar with is the on-demand version, where we're asked to click on a link that's been sent to our email or phone. The biggest downside of this implementation is that our emails and phones could be spoofed and bad actors can get to see all our secrets. Now, a step up from our perspective is the soft token, which requires you to use an authenticator app. The service will generate a secret key, which you'll usually scan into an authenticator app, and that key is used to generate a random number that expires between 30 seconds and five minutes. The biggest downside from our perspective using this method is that the secret key could be stolen from the service or from your device, which means a bad actor can still easily claim to be you and steal your secrets. Hard tokens are basically physical devices that generate a one-time password. The most common hard token is the key fob. My oldest key fob is my Blizzard account key fob. You don't pay a lot of money for this back in the day. The key fob has one job, which is to generate a random number based on a secret key that matches the secret key on the service. This method is much more secure than the first two as the key fob is physically removed from the internet and the one-time password can't be intercepted by bad actors. The biggest issue from our perspective is that you can lose the fob, which is terrible. Now, an evolution of the hard token are the ones that come baked with Fast Identity Online Universal Second Factor or FIDO U2F. All the authentications required occur on the key, so there are no one-time passwords that can be intercepted by bad actors. The biggest drawback from my perspective is the possibility of losing the hardware key, which why a lot of these services ask you to buy two, <laughs> which can get very expensive very quick. Also, another downside is that services actually need to implement this ability to use FIDO U2F. Now, there are several different brands of hardware, so about all the keys that fit our current ecosystem of devices. Each key had to have at least two of the four connectivity features, which included being USB-C compatible, Lightning compatible, NFC, and Bluetooth. Now, having all these features would ensure that we could use the security keys across all our Apple stuff and the occasional Android device. We excluded products that were only USB-A compatible and didn't include a USB-C connector. So out of the eight keys that we found based on our criteria, we, we decided on products from Ubico, Google, and HyperSecure. So after that, we just went and bought them all. Unsponsored content. Now, while doing the research for this video, there was a ton of other FIDO U2F key and key and products that we kind of came across, but we just, we wanted the simple keys. There was stuff like for Bitcoin wallets, there was stuff for like key card, punch, key code, punch things. And so we just focused on the basics for this video. All right, let's start with HyperSecu. Secu, Secu. It's the cheapest out of all the keys in this video and only made it into our buy list because they included a USB-C adapter with the USB-A key. Out of the handful of keys that we have, the HyperSecu had the best build quality as the metal encased key felt the toughest. But in our situation, I dealt the plastic adapter would last as long as the key when tethered to my keys. We believe there are plans for a USB-C version, 
material according to the website, and until then, we would consider the HyperSQ to be a good product for somebody who has a USB-C laptop. That's it. This HyperSQ key is the most straightforward product in this video. It doesn't come with an app to use, it's just a hardware token. You plug it in and go. Next up is the Google Titan key, and for 25 bucks, you can get the Titan Security Key, which comes with two things, a Bluetooth version and a USB-A version, which comes with a USB-C adapter. After spending 25 US dollars or 42 Canadian dollars and going through Google's half-ass instructions, I <laughs> realized that Google had a USB-C version. So this video was supposed to come out last week, but we had to wait to get this. Thanks, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> We went and did the research for it. And it was just like, hey, the Titan keys. And I thought this had the USB-C version and it didn't because, you know, I'm a bad reviewer, apparently. Um, so I went and ordered like the USB-C version. So we had to wait another week for it to show up and then we could use it and then review it properly. But I also thought this house had NFC and it really doesn't. So, you know, I blame myself partially, but I also blame Google's really bad product pages. Like they're so terrible. No, I just blame you. <laughs> now the Google Titan keys can be used as standalone hard tokens like the HyperSecu or in conjunction with Google's Smart Lock app. Now I was excited about having the corresponding app because I thought it'd be very similar to what Ubico does. But it's not, it's completely different and almost borderline useless. It seems really odd to have stuff like the Titan key that doesn't tie into other stuff like Google's authenticator apps in any sort of manner. The Google Smart Lock app only works with Google accounts as it doesn't cover as many services as the next products we're going to review. Now I realized during this review period that Google has already incorporated 2FA into iOS apps like YouTube, where if you sign into a new device, Google will prompt you to open the app on a device that they know you have uh, and authenticate it in that manner. That's pretty cool. Now, if you're an Android phone user, this feature seems to be baked into newer devices, so you don't really need any of that. In fact, the Google Smart Lock app doesn't actually exist for Android devices. So Val, if our viewers appreciate what we do, what should they do? Click subscribe. What else should they do? Hit the notification bell. What else should they do? Support us through Patreon. <laughs> what else should they do? <laughs> Buy their stuff through our Amazon links. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Next up is the YubiKey 5CI, and it's a little different as it's the only one in this video that has both lightning and USB-C connectivity. We initially thought that getting a product with both heads would automatically make it the best, but the 5CI actually looks kind of funny having a head on each. It's still very, very good, but I guess it is only a security key, so it doesn't really need to look nice. It's definitely functionality over aesthetics. Now, if you're neck deep into Apple's ecosystem, the 5CI is going to be the most straightforward to use. You'll be able to plug the key into any iPhone iPad or Mac. You really don't have to worry about which one of your devices can actually read the NFC portion of products like the next one we're going to talk about, the YubiKey 5C NFC. Now the YubiKey 5C NFC really surprised me. At first it was a moment of wow, this is pretty cool to see it work with the NFC reader, but it was dampened by the subsequent dozens of notifications I got for opening, you know, the YubiKey thing in Safari. Now using an NFC key is kind of a double-edged sword. The wireless freedom is great with NFC, but it will only work in a specific work Flow. If you rely heavily on your iPad over your iPhone, this NFC key isn't going to be very useful because no iPads can read it. That's not going to be a problem if you're using a newer iPad Air or, you know, iPad Pro, but still, it's something to take into consideration. Now, if your iPhone is the focus of all your computing, you do need to make sure that it's new enough to support the NFC feature with the key. My iPhone 7s, 8s, and 10s wouldn't work with this YubiKey. Now, one of the neat things that you can do is to pair your YubiKey to the YubiKey Authenticator, which is handy when you're dealing with two FA options from Facebook where they don't actually use these FIDO U2F keys, only an authenticator app. Now from what I can surmise, the authenticator is pulling the codes from the key rather than generating them from a secret key that's stored on a server somewhere else. That kind of makes this YubiKey set up with any YubiKey one of the most consumer friendly ways of securing your accounts. Now before you go and drop some of your hard earned cash on these keys, there are a few annoyances that you need to know about when using these keys. The first is that unless you keep your key on your person the entire time, there will be times where you're doing some computing and the service you're using will prompt for the key and you'll have to go find it. I equate it to forgetting your CVV number on your credit card and your wallet's in the other room. Surely I'm not the only one that finds that annoying. What's your CVV number? 46923. <laughs> do some online shopping, hold on. <laughs> So the second thing that's kind of a, whoops, an annoyance with these tiny, tiny things is that you might lose one or some dog might eat one. No, Monty hasn't eaten one yet, but you know, you have to buy two. 
you know, in order for you to like safely be able to access all your accounts all the time. But the thing is, you can't just like sync them together. In the case of like Yubico, YubiKey, Yubico Authenticator, like you have to go and like scan the special QR code into both of the, uh, into both of the keys. And so that just gets kind of annoying, right? Like, and if you really want to be safe, you still have to go print out that QR code and then be able to use it, you know, cause it's really hard to hack paper, but it's just, if you don't do that and you lose one of these keys, contacting customer service is actually a pain in the butt. I lost the password to our Twitter account, which we don't use, which I guess doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> but it took five weeks for me to get control of my account again because I couldn't log in because I forgot the password, right? And so that's kind of the process you have to go through if you lose the uh, key that is stored. So that's why you have to get two. That's an annoyance because these things aren't terribly cheap. The last thing that's mildly annoying is that each service will have a slightly different set of instructions for adding these keys to your account. Either that or the manufacturers are making it seem more complicated by listing out every service that has a hardware token base 2FA. It's so bad. <laughs> also, not every service has 2FA baked in their security, so I suggest changing the password on your CatMeme website. <laughs> okay, on to my password tip. You ready? Ready. Ready? Yeah. You're taking down notes? Oh, wait, no, I'm not ready. <laughs> and one of the things that I started doing years ago, not years ago, actually, no, years ago, 2017, 2016, 2017, I created my own secret key. So instead of trying to remember passwords or using the exact same one, I would base the password for the service. And it's actually pretty neat. I'm pretty proud of it, actually. Does this mean you've changed your passwords on everything now? Because you're like putting this out into the world for everyone to see. Well, no. <laughs> like genuine question, cause I'm like, you're giving away all your tips here. But people have to guess my secret key. Basically, I follow a sequence of letters and numbers that incorporates the name of the service that I'm creating a password for. For example, the first two characters of my passwords are generally the same, so I pick a year that's important to me, like Monty's birth year, 08. Then I throw in my preferred special character. I'm kind of partial to the ampersand, so my password is now 08 and. Now, if I'm creating a password for Facebook, you can take the first three letters and capitalize the second letter, so the password currently becomes 08 and FAC. Now, after that, throw in another special character or the same one from before, and it looks like this. I'm not gonna to try to read that out loud because that looks terrible. And then add the last four letters in reverse of the website or service that you're trying to create a password for and you get that. Looks random, almost. It's not. Now, if you need more numbers, you can add the year that you got your driver's license. So the password becomes this. Yes, I got my driver's license last year. I'm kidding. Now, every one of my passwords is a variation of the secret key, which makes things a little easier when it comes to managing passwords. Over the years, I've added a couple of variations to the day keys, like when my parents were born or the year that I broke my ankle to kind of help me separate passwords for, you know, different channels or different reasons to have that key. So that's how I manage my passwords. And it's just, I barely use like Safari's built-in password manager. Like it's, it just works very, very well. I just use it on your Facebook account. It didn't work. I didn't give you my exact key. Oh wait, never mind. I just use your birth year. I'm in. So if you found this video useful, again, this isn't a sponsored video. We went and bought all these things ourselves to figure out what the best 2FA key is. So get your stuff through our Amazon links. First time watching one of my videos, one of our videos, I encourage you to click subscribe so that you can see Monty sleeping on the job. Thanks for watching. So if you like what we're doing, be sure to buy all of your keys or anything you're gonna purchase through our Amazon links.